welcome to yet another exciting edition of The Property Show. Our recent signature bus tour was quite a refreshing experience with developers putting their best foot forward, delivering quality projects in this competitive market. It offers convenience and you're able to see variety which is good to in decision making. Today, you are in time for an exclusive access to new developments along the Mombasa Road Road. Later on, we continue conversations with women shaping the built industry, plus an update on what's brewing in the sector. The ice that looked really, really nice, and the rooms were quite special. Join this conversation on our social media handles. Let's get started. As always, there is something for everyone. factors to consider when buying real estate in a competitive market. The key to a successful real estate transaction is taking time to view the property personally. And our bus tour does just that. We elevate the home search experience. Next, a highlight of projects visited during our just concluded signature bus tour on the Mombasa Road routes. In the near future, I'll expect to have a family. So I expect to be a house owner in Kenya. So I expect to see good family houses in a good environment where you can raise up kids. Also, I have parents who would like to retire very soon. So I would like to see potential houses where they can retire, good environment near the outskirts of Nairobi, so at a reasonable price. What I expect to achieve uh, this bus tour, I just hope like, Whatever our clients are looking for, I hope like they find something and even if they don't, we usually follow up with them later on to try and get them exactly what they are looking for. Gardens, the highlight of our recent signature bus tour on the Mombasa Road route was quite a refreshing experience. They say, when it's good, it's grand. Let's have an exclusive tour of this project. I'm standing at the main entrance of this exquisite four-bedroom townhouse. Welcome. Clearly, the open plan concept in the living room works very well. As you can see, it's creating easy transition to the entire home. Another winner for me are the glass doors, which takes you to the gardens and of course brings in a lot of natural light. The second winner for me is the spacious master bedroom, which comes with a grand bathroom from the bathtub, shower cubicle, his and her sinks, and lots of accessories to complete your bathroom. The kitchen has generous storage spaces, and of course, the island makes it chic and inviting. Let me finish by saying Fairfield Gardens ticks all the boxes to the T for modern family living. Let's hear more on this project. Fairfield Gardens consists of 70 high quality townhouses. The estate is set on five acres and each of the four bedroom unit has a built up area of 190 square meters all with a DSQ. 
the project is located in Siokimau, 13 kilometers from Nairobi CBD. Accommodation features include an entrance hallway providing privacy to living spaces and a transition into the house. Spacious living and dining areas with an open plan concept allowing for ease of access to the rest of the house. The large windows and glass doors leading to the garden allows lots of natural light in the living area. A fully assembled kitchen with an island counter and kitchen hood, there is lots of storage space in the top and bottom drawers as well as a kitchen store for additional storage. Utility area with adobe sink and washing machine provision. An ensuite guest room at the lower level for privacy of the guests. A solid mahogany balustrade staircase leading to the upper level of the house. A spacious master ensuite bedroom with a walk in closet, as well as a grand bathroom with a shower cubicle, bathtub, his and her sinks, plus more storage spaces. Spacious third and fourth bedrooms sharing a bathroom with fitted wardrobes. The development. Other features in the development include perimeter wall with electric fencing and 24 hour manned gate for security, a borehole and municipal water supply with an additional 2000 liter attic domestic water storage, solar water heating systems with an electric controller, two parking slots per house, street lighting and generator for communal areas, a clubhouse that will include a swimming pool, gymnasium, daycare and playground, community shop and a management office. Completion and handover of the project is anticipated to be in the fourth quarter of 2019. While some of us might choose to buy a ready-made home, many like to start from scratch, buying land and eventually building that dream home. We had an opportunity to view Site and Service Land Scheme, which comes with a buy and build concept. Here is more. The project that we are looking at is Enka Gardens Kitengela. This project is a very young project. We call it one of our baby projects. It's a project that uh, began last year. And the vision behind this project is to offer a buy and build project to our customers to transform their lifestyles from paying rent to home ownership in a small period of time. The size of the plot is a 50 by 100. The entire project is eight acres. It has 50 plots and each plot is going for 3 million. When we talk about buy and build, we have exactly two options. One is where a customer comes in with a budget and they're able to buy the piece of land first, but with an end goal of home ownership. Our next stop takes us to a haven of comfort and luxury, Kitengela Terraces, dubbed the shortest distance between paradise and a place to call home. Let's hear more. Tangela Terraces is located at uh, Pinto Road, Milimani area. Um, we have 40 units and uh, the 40 units have three different types of houses. Starting from the biggest unit to the middle unit to the smallest unit and they have different pricing too. We have six units still available for sale. We have a borehole on site, uh, Safaricom is also on site. Then the houses has has also been fitted with a uh, purifying machine in that you don't have to be buying uh, mineral water for your consumption. Kitengela Terraces is a development designed ideally for exclusive and comfortable living and comprises of 40 exquisite two-bedroom apartments set amidst tranquil environment in Milimani area Kitengela, with the access road right opposite the Nairobi Women's Hospital. Accommodation includes lounge with balcony, 
large windows bringing natural light, dining area, open plan kitchen with granite worktops, dobe area, state of the art finishes with attention to detail, visitors cloakroom and master bedroom ensuite. Salient features include perimeter wall with electric fencing and a guardhouse, ample parking space and adequate visitors parking, cabro paved walkways, solar water heating and boho. During the bus tour, we stopped by Karibu Homes, a community with affordable options starting from 3.1 million shillings. Next. Basically, you have two types of houses here. We have the standard version and the enhanced version. So the standards are the ones that you buy uh, just to customize and uh, you finish the way that uh, you want. The other version uh, will be the enhanced version. So that one is something that is ready to move in. Huh? Uh, that means uh, for what is missing on the standard version is the tiles, the upper cabinets for the kitchen and the wardrobes. The size of this uh, land is 20 pieces of acre. We are doing around 1,000 units and uh, 200. But you'll also appreciate that uh, there's a lot of space actually in this project. The Athi homes have standard finishes with common features including open plan living room and dining area, steel casement windows and brass curtain fittings, kitchen with inbuilt cupboards and an adjacent utility area with Dolby sink, master bedroom ensuite and other bedrooms share a tiled bathroom, built-in wardrobes and enhanced finishes. The Tana homes have superior finishes with common features such as attractive open plan living and dining room, kitchen and utility area, ceramic tile floors, steel casement windows and master bedroom ensuite, separate shared tiled bathroom and shower, built-in wardrobes and enhanced finishes. Getting onto the property ladder requires preparation and research. Next, insights from a young aspiring family man on his bus tour experience and whether he finally got what he's been looking for. I've watched uh, Property Show for a few years right now, so it has always been my desire to join the bus tour. So I was, in, I was invited by a friend, but I was also aware of what you guys do. So it has been a big honor to join in this journey. My best uh, view right now is the Caribou Homes. The prices are kind of reasonable and the spare sizes are quite good. So it's something you'll uh, you find its value for money. So because when you're buying a home, it's not something you tomorrow will go back to the market and buy again. So you need a home that will favor you in terms of space, in terms of location, in terms of other amenities, e.g. space. Because a home is not something you're buying only for yourself, especially if you're planning to expand your family. Something you're buying considering other people in mind, e.g. a wife or your children. So with Karibu Homes, they have a very good compound whereby children can play whereby there is a good bonding area for you and the neighbors. Also, you can be able to network as the neighbors. We head off to Mavoko Park, but before we get the details of this project, let me share a short story. Recently, we featured a proud homeowner on how our signature bus tour brought her to the finish line. One of the main reasons why I decided to pick on Mavoko Park was um, the location and then also uh, proximity to you know, schools and um, my church and my place of work. For sure, the tour gave her access to seasoned and committed developers, legal and financial advice. Here is more on Mavoko Park.
Mavoko Park is located in Siokimau, off Community Road, 20 kilometers from Nairobi CBD, and 11 kilometers from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. We have uh, 92 units in total, 58 in phase two, 34 in phase one. Phase one is completely sold, but we have units in phase two, which after this we can talk, see how we can start the process of buying. And then we have um, DSTV dishes for the houses. They come installed together with the normal antenna. We have a solar water heater for every house capacity 200. We have a water pump for every house so that you do not have to have problems with water. And on that note, we have a borehole on site. Accommodation includes spacious living room and dining room, fitted kitchen with detached pantry, spacious ensuite master bedroom with walk-in closet, common bathroom with shower, family room, balcony, and Dolby area with provisions for washing machine. Our final stop takes us to Athiview Estate. This community provides four bedroom maisonettes that comes with six important features. Space, privacy, quality, security, convenience, and most importantly, competitive prices. Let's listen in. Athiview is located in Siokimau. The estate is three kilometers from Siokimau Railway Station and just seven kilometers from industrial area and 18 kilometers from Nairobi Central Business District. Accommodation includes spacious living room, comfortable dining room, kitchen, pantry space, Dolby area, visitors' cloakroom, ensuite guest room, two bedrooms with separate bathroom, ensuite master, fitted wardrobes, imported sanitary fittings, and self-contained domestic quarters. Indeed, the bus tour has something for everyone. Here is a take when looking for a retirement home. This is my second time bus tour. Um, I'm looking for a retirement home and that's why I decided to, to come back. So far, so good. I've not found what I'm looking for, so I'm still shopping around. Today, I'm on Mombasa Road. I went to Earth River, um, but now I'm thinking of heading to Thika Road, and probably I'll get something. So the commoner is not able to afford the up market. I don't consider myself a person of the up market. I would love to live in up market, and uh, that now is the reason why I decided to take the bus tour again and I plan to do it again and again, probably even 10 times, before now I decide to settle down on one property. But an ideal property is something that every Kenyan can afford. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Here at the property show, we understand getting onto the property ladder is never a case of one size fits all. That's why our signature bus tour brings different products from apartments, site and service landscapes, as well as luxurious maisonettes. And guess what? At First Avenue, we have a whole range of options in every price point. Just give us a call and we'll be happy to get you started. Let's shift gears. Last week, we started an interesting conversation with women making great strides and shaping the built industry. 
Today, we recognize another set of women from an interior designer, legal and president of Architectural Association of Kenya. Next, we speak to an art lover driven by her passion for color, texture, and a dream to turn empty spaces to contemporary beautiful homes. The one thing we'll know today is what drives this interior designer. Here is more. My passion for interior design is just to design spaces where people feel comfortable, attractive spaces, basically where people just feel they belong to that space and it reflects them. Because you usually interact to make sure the space you have designed has the personality of the client you are designing for. From an early age, I showed an interest in uh, art. That's from when I was in uh, my primary education and I pursued it up to my A-level and one of the courses I picked was interior design. It was being offered in University of Nairobi and that's what I pursued as my degree course. So after my degree course, I saw I had a passion for doing interior spaces, color, texture, filling spaces with uh, what you want to see a space to look at or how a space should be at the end of the project, filling in any kind of empty space where you get the fulfillment of actually getting something into it and your ideas are realized into that space. Of course, with the input of the occupant. Jagged designers given the opportunity to come and work here first as an interior designer and the atmosphere that I found in Cheke Designers made me grow to pursue and understand it better and also to understand interior spaces better and how to handle each and every interior space, each and every client and also on a larger field, the building industries where we interact with different professions and how to contribute to that building industries effectively as an interior designer. And also to understand what it requires to be an interior design in the building industry. And I found it is very interesting and uh, you are given that opportunity to showcase your own, would I say, personality into some of these spaces and also understanding and educating the end user and also the client, putting together spaces, textures, imaging, all those together up to where the client actually moves into the space and appreciates the space you've given. Because the journey of actually getting the space done, it is a process which is not short because we follow due process or design process to get these designs done. We give spaces that work for the client. We give spaces that people will enjoy and be comfortable in, in terms of functionality, in terms of usability, in terms of movement, in terms of light intensity, in terms of even taking care of natural air circulation within a space. The world has grown green. What are we doing in design to make sure that we are not using so much AC or artificial air elements? What are we doing for natural light? So as much as possible, we put those elements into play in our design so that there is movement of air there is enough natural light into a space. And this, I think, because people are going green. So as much as possible, we also try to use products which are natural in, in form in our design so that it's easy accessible, it is locally available, 
and it uh, and can be used easily. If I'm to be given a space, let's say like uh, floor finish, there is a natural granite, which is locally available. We also have natural stone, which is mazeras, which is locally available. And also another long lasting material would be like, uh, would I say, the natural bricks that people use, because those are natural, it's made from the soil that comes from a, from our environment or from our, from our space. So we sometimes we do use those uh, materials to get effects onto a particular space, a feature wall or a waterfall or a pot, a floor finish, uh, depending now with the extent on, on the design we have in play when you're delivering a project. Taking a short break, still ahead, conversations with women shaping the real estate industry. A tale of searching an ideal home whilst living in the diaspora. Eventually, I narrowed it down to two estates that I had seen. Plus much, much more. Don't go away, keep it property show. We are back. You're watching The Property Show with another round on women shaping the built industry. But first, the Kenya Homes Expo is back. This time round, you'll have an opportunity to interact with over 200 real estate developers and agents, industry suppliers, interior design companies, as well as financial institutions. The Property Show team will also be there. Come and interact with us at the Lifestyle Inspired Expo. See you there. The first woman to be elected president of Architectural Association of Kenya. She's also known for creating public awareness on sustainable building construction practices. Emma has also been keen on improving the holistic built environment. Let's hear what keeps her grounded in a male-dominated field. As a child growing up, I always knew I wanted to do something with my hands, something that I wanted to experience, uh, uh, the work of my hands rather than uh, push paper as it were, I'd do reports and the like. So I was always creative um, um, and, and I was encouraged from a very young age by my um, art teachers through primary and through high school to pursue a career in a creative field and architecture we say is the ultimate creative in a sense. The Architectural Association of Kenya is the premier association for built environment professionals. So we don't only have architects, we also represent engineers, uh, quantity surveyors, planners, landscape architects, environmental design consultants, construction project managers, among others. And what we do, um, we are a caucus of professionals who work on buildings as it, were, as it were. So out there in practice, these are the, generally the professionals who will be working together on a project. And they, the AK is almost a natural home for those people who are working on, on buildings to, uh, together. So um, I was the first female president and as fate would have it be, I came to the helm of the association on the 50th year of AK. Uh, which was almost symbolic and very good. It took 50 years for the association to actually elect a woman. Um, and it comes with a lot of responsibility. I knew then, um, be because I was the first female president, I was going to set the pace in terms of what people's perception was of female leaders and female uh, professionals. So I took it as a very, very, very serious um, responsibility. And, um, and I got there having walked through the ranks and being in different leadership 
positions that uh, in the association. So by the time I was actually getting to the helm, people I had a proven track record. People knew what I was able to do, and despite uh, the association um, being 90% men. They, they, they had that confidence in me. So um, i just like to you know, um, commend all the men out there who are advocating uh, for balance, for better, ensuring that women are also on the table. And people actually said it is time we actually had a female president. We've advocated in terms of legal reform for our industry with a big four. There's a lot of focus on our industry, but our, our legislation that governs our uh, professions is still very, very old. Uh, for example, the Architects and Quantity Surveyors Act is as old as 1978, um, which is more than uh, 40 years without being changed. So we have been at the fore of that in sending a uh, setting a foundation. We've relied a lot on government to, to bring this reform in the legal framework, but as private sector coming together uh, with emerging professions and saying what can we to get, do together, what needs to be done, because there are many new professions coming up, and setting that framework and agreeing based on international best, best practice, agreeing on what uh, the legislative framework needs to look like for our sector. So that was one good thing in terms of advocacy. We've advocated a lot with um, Nairobi City County and other counties. Uh, number one on automation of of the approval, building approval process, making it more transparent, um, ensuring that um, there's enough data, even as I speak and say 70% and the like. Advocacy is best when it's based on data and, 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 and technology helps with that. We've had four counties on, on a digital platform in terms of approval, Kisumu, Mombasa, Nairobi and Kiambu, and just recently we got Kajiado on board through the advocacy of the AEK. Um, so that's been another achievement. Under advocacy as well, we've had the physical planning bill. Planning is where everything starts. If we don't get our spatial planning right as um, towns and urban centers, then the rest is just all, all talk. We have to get the foundation right, which is planning. And physical planning bill contributes to that. AK has been part of that, ensuring it's improved. Whatever is put out is actually reflective of the realities of, of the constitution and devolution. So that's in terms of advocacy. We've had, uh, we've had also something we call Mulika Mjengo, just in light of um, the demolitions that were happening. And, and almost third parties being caught off guard who had no idea that their building was unrepairian because you're a third party, you've bought something from a developer, you had no idea. There's a gap there in terms of educating the members of the public, hence the Jenam Jengo, but also Mulikam Jengo, where if you as a member of the um, community see something that you suspect is wrong, say something. Say something and AAK with its platform can ab be able to advocate, be it with NEMA and find out what's the reality of this. How come there's a building coming up without approval or what is the rationale of why a 30-story building is coming down next, up next to your bungalow. Is that right? What an AK has a platform to voice that on your behalf as a citizen. So we had Mulika Mjengo, which was also on social media. Very important. Now, when we move to other I, um, other achievements in terms of membership, AK has the, uh, uh, when we started, we said we want AK to be visible. We want to be thought leaders and opinion leaders in, in the watchdog of industry, as it were. And we've achieved that through a lot of uh, media relations and ensuring our voice was out there, that we are discussing on the table with the government. Uh, even as we talk about affordable housing, we have to be on the table um, advocating for, for affordable housing that is dignified, that is holistic in a sense, and that the matter of local content is not forgotten, that a lot of this affordable housing is going to be paid for by taxpayers' money or through funds that uh, Kenyans have contributed. How are we ensuring that these, this capital is still retained in the country for the benefit of all Kenyans? So that is in terms of membership and, and media and, and the visibility. But also for membership, make it easier for members. We've automated, I think we're one of the few associations that has fully automated our membership systems in terms of applying has become easier. It's faster to get your certificate almost instantly and just ensuring member experience is, is top notch. When it comes to the success of a real estate transaction, legal counsel is the number one most important factor. Our next guest is a legal professional, shares on the red flags to look out for when buying a property.
Real estate was not my major interest at first when I was beginning my practice, but as I went along, I just discovered that um, encountered people who uh, either were duped or uh, misled in real estate transactions or um, were not able to navigate through the processes. Um, and I just felt that I needed to rise up to the occasion and become a solution to the problems and you know, just assist them in uh, you know, going through the processes. You know. uh, it is prudent to engage a qualified lawyer and um, I must emphasize on the part qualified who understands the legal processes, who can be able to assist you in undertaking due diligence and also in reviewing the agreement for sale which is uh, you know, paramount when uh, dealing with land. All land contracts must be in writing and also to review any other documentation because you know lawyers um, are trained for this and they're able to pick out some of the things that uh, a person, a lay person may not be able to pick up on and also um, will be able to negotiate better terms for you as a buyer. What I advise people to do is just to check the Law Society website to check whether the advocate is active. And because um, of course there are those people who you know, pose as lawyers out there who you know, may mislead you, uh, you know, pretending to be a lawyer and so forth. First and foremost, um, as a buyer, you should request for the copy of the title. That will enable you to undertake a search at the lands registry to confirm who, whether the seller is actually the registered proprietor or the actual owner of the property. And also to confirm whether there are any encumbrances registered against the title. Encumbrances I mean like charges from the bank or a caveat. Yes, and then secondly, um, you should request for a copy of the seller's ID and PIN certificate. And if you're dealing with a company, you should request for a certificate of incorporation to enable you conduct a search at the company's registry. That will enable you determine who the shareholders and directors of that company are, because it's important to know who you're dealing with. Then thirdly, also, um, I'd advise people to check in with um, Survey of Kenya or Kura and Kenha, which are normally you know, related uh, or deal with roads, to verify and confirm that your land is not on a road reserve. Uh, also, go further and uh, review the Ndongo report. You, people have heard of it. It's a report detailing uh, uh, public land that has been illegally allocated. Make sure that your land is not adversely mentioned in that particular report. And also, you can um, visit. Make sure that you inspect the property and um, ensure that it's not a swamp or on the riparian. I think you've seen around, you know, there have been uh, various demolitions because of properties that are on the riparian. And then also, um, if you can go further and, and uh, you know, ask the neighbors in that area you know, and interrogate the history of that property. Because you know you can never be too careful you know, when you're dealing with land, it's an expensive investment. So uh, just call the whole hog and ensure that you do your due diligence. You can request for the, the title as well. Uh, normally for the apartments or, or houses that are erected in a development, they should be the, what you call the main title. You can do a search on that title just to ensure that it's actually the person selling it to you, the developer is actually the owner of that property. And also, because um, it's a development, ensure that uh, the seller or the developer has obtained all the, the approvals and consents from the county government, from NEMA, from NCA, and if you're dealing with uh, you know, what you call it, agricultural land, that they've got in the land control board as well. And all the other relevant um, approvals and consents, depending on the location and the nature of the land that you're dealing with. You know, as a seller as well, you need to know who you're dealing with, you know, who's the purchaser. And uh, of course, you can again request for a copy of the ID or passport and PIN certificate. And also, if you're dealing with a company, you can request for a certificate of incorporation and uh, to enable you to do a search, just to verify that uh, the person you're dealing with is the actual person. Then also, um, as a developer, make sure that you get all the approvals that I've just mentioned, approvals and consents, so that your, uh, your property is not demolished or you know, brought down because of lack of these uh, approvals. Then also, um, look at the zoning laws of that area or regulations. There are some areas that are controlled, so you need to make sure that the developments that you're putting up are in line with the zoning regulations or laws of that particular area. the home ownership segment. How do you make a successful search for that dream home while still living in the diaspora? Let's get the answers from this intriguing story. Now, 
I am a humanitarian worker working for an international organization. My job entails uh, moving around a little bit um, in the world to promote a refugee cause. So I'm a social worker, you can say simply, with the refugees and I've been in this field for more than 10 years. I'm also a Kenyan and I live in Nairobi when I come home. I had worked for a few years and I knew uh, that I definitely want to own a home one day. But you know how it is, especially with young people or when you're younger, you're afraid, you really don't know uh, what will happen with this uh, process. And then I gave it a very long thought uh, into that. And um, I decided, why not? Uh, I just have to go right in, you know, and, and find something that can work for me. Initially, I had rented a very small place, just a one bedroom around Nebakasi, which was not far from home. And when I decided I want to own a home, I started doing a lot of internet uh, searches. Internet searches because I did not have the luck to be in Kenya at that time. And uh, the internet obviously came in handy. So I would simply just key in uh, three bedroom home uh, for sale and I would look at the many options that, uh, that came up look at the rooms, look at the how the estate was organized in itself. And this took a very long time. It took a couple of months actually of intensive searches for me to really get to see something that I liked. And uh, at this time I was working outside uh, Kenya and when I'd come back home, I'd use that time to also go around. Um, I knew that my options were really around Siokimau for the budget that I had uh, for the property. So I'd just drive and walk in, I'd see uh, them advertising, you know, some billboards, and I'd just walk in, maybe at the gate they would say uh, house for sale or something, and I'd just go in and look, look at the houses look at uh, the space uh, that the homes offered and of course it would be time for me to go back to work, I'd go back and continue with my internet searches. Eventually I narrowed it down to two estates that I had seen. One um, was very very well laid out in uh, Siokimau area but the problem was uh, with the rooms actually. The price was right. I think that time it was around four million for a two bedroom house and uh, which I thought you don't really find these prizes in the market and for such an attractive uh, estate. And uh, when I was nearing, you know, to start the process uh, in the house, I went back and really thought, is a two bedroom enough for me? Although I was still single with no obligation, I decided to find something bigger. And uh, through my searches, I came across uh, the estate. I saw uh, the rooms uh, in the internet and I contacted my mother and asked her, please go and visually check out at uh, this estate and see if it represents something that you think I can like and if you think you also like what you see. So that's what she did and the feedback she gave me was the estate looked really, really nice and the rooms were quite spacious and she thought for a three bedroom and for the price that was going uh, at the market, it was something definitely worth taking and uh, that's when I settled on the house that I'm living in. Towards the end of 2013 I identified my, um, my apartment and then I started the process uh, now with the professionals in um, early 2014. So what I did, I knew I had uh, some savings and um, 10% uh, was required. Uh, so what I did is um, I was looking for funds to fill in the rest of the amount of the property. Uh, so I approached the circle that I am in. I was assigned a relationship manager and that's where my journey started. Of course, uh, you need uh, a lot of things. Apart from the money, your house has to be valued. So you need a valuer to, to do that. And uh, I decided to just save time 
and uh, depend on the experience and expertise of the circle and I uh, used the individual that they uh, referred me to and this individual gave me a discount on my case because I was outside the country and uh, it would be very difficult to do to deal with everything um, alone I had to really really rely on, on my mother to help me with the entire process really. give you some tips on factors to consider when buying real estate in a competitive market. First, identify a suitable financial provider. Secondly, pick a property in close proximity to your daily life operations, including your place of work. And if you have a young family, consider schools, hospitals, and other related amenities. Before signing the dotted line, double check the developer's track record and remember, due diligence is a must. Finally, if you're taking a mortgage, remember it's a long-term commitment. If you're looking to upgrade to the next phase, the property show will be happy to make the process seamless working with you every step of the way. Just give us a call and we'll make it happen. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Next Sunday, our hot topic demystifies the process of buying property off plan, plus a highlight of the Banda Homes handover experience. Let's keep talking on our social media handles. Till next week, as always, there is something for everyone. Bye.